What was the reason we chose to do this study? This was an invited manuscript by the editor of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology um, on treatment of hemorrhoids for gastroenterologists. And the reason why we did it to do the reason why we decided to do this study was we think that hemorrhoids and anal rectal disorders should be in the bailiwick of gastroenterologists. For many years, gastroenterologists have not focused on anal rectal disorders or hemorrhoids. They've deferred that work to others, mainly surgeons, colorectal surgeons, general surgeons. But we feel strongly that this area of medicine should be an integral part of gastroenterology. And we wrote the piece, uh, it's a review manuscript. We wrote it to, again, emphasize why we think this should be uh, an integral part of gastroenterology. So what's the methodology of this manuscript? This was a review manuscript. It's not original research. We spent some time reviewing the literature in hemorrhoids, distilling the important features of it for gastroenterologists, and we wrote a review manuscript. What we did was we reviewed the epidemiology of hemorrhoids, we reviewed the pathogenesis of hemorrhoids, we reviewed the treatments of hemorrhoids, both lifestyle treatments, um, endoscopic treatments, non-endoscopic therapies, and some surgical therapies. And we compiled that all into the manuscript as a nice review so that people would have a refresher on hemorrhoids for those who were originally versed in it, maybe let it drift away a bit. And for those who are new to this area of gastroenterology, we wanted to be a broad overview of the field. So what were the highlights of this review manuscript? I think there's many highlights that can be taken away from this uh, manuscript. Hemorrhoids are very common. Patients with hemorrhoids commonly present to gastroenterologists and gastroenterologists should have some concept of what to do. Many colorectal and anorectal disorders that patients have are sometimes overinterpreted as hemorrhoids by the patients. We wanted physicians to have an idea of differential diagnosis and to know that they have to exclude more significant pathology um, and to consider other things in the differential diagnosis before hemorrhoids are diagnosed, particularly with regard to rectal bleeding. Uh, patients should always be investigated for rectal bleeding in some manner, shape, or form before uh, physician decides that hemorrhoids are the diagnosis. And we wanted physicians to have an idea of how to treat hemorrhoids, and we presented a variety of treatment options, including band ligation, IRC infrared coagulation, um, uh, various heater probe modalities, um, and some surgical modalities so that GIs would have a broad knowledge of the treatment options available. And we did focus on a few options which we think are the best treatment options, and we discussed why those were the best treatment options. Rubber band ligation is the most popular and most common treatment method chosen to treat hemorrhoids with Infrared coagulation being uh, the second most uh, common treatment option being chosen. And we discussed why those two are probably the most popular. And uh, we did discuss the um, advantages and disadvantages of each versus other modalities. So what are the conclusions of the paper and how did we address some of the controversies in the paper? We discussed a lot about pathogenesis in the paper, why hemorrhoids occur. We discussed evaluation of hemorrhoids, as I've already mentioned. And our conclusions are, our conclusions were, among other things, that rubber band ligation is probably the best option for uh, gastroenterologists for grades one, two, and three hemorrhoids. Um, we talked about various aspects of rubber band ligation, including where to place the band. If the band is placed above the dentate line, 
by at least a few centimeters. There is generally no pain associated with banding. We talked about um, various techniques of banding, including a touch technique or blind technique where anoscopy is not necessary. We concluded that that has a lot of advantages. It doesn't require wall suction. It's generally painless. There's less instrumentation. With regard to rubber band ligation, we discussed how many bands should be placed at each session. We concluded that it's probably safest to place no more than one band, banding one variceal column per session, and we discussed why that is, why multiple bandings leads to uh, more complications. So placing the band above the dentate line, well above the dentate line, decreases pain. Performing one band at a time lessens complications and using a touch technique where you don't need an anoscope and you don't need wall suction is probably the easiest with the less instrumentation for the patient. So I'd say those are the main conclusions of the manuscript.